Gravity Falls is a show built on its mysteries. Much of the reason the show gained popularity were those overarching mysteries, and that not only spawned a whole series of Disney Channel shows following that same format, but that popularity of Gravity Falls has never waned, even to this day. With Halloween Tomorrow, I want to look back on Gravity Falls and some of the show's best mysteries and discuss why they work so well. Happy Halloween, and let's begin. We can't start with anything besides the journals. The journals weren't just a compelling mystery which was revealed over the two seasons of the show, but a great introduction into the show's lore, or more specifically, the weirdness of the town, Gravity Falls. Even from the pilot, Dipper was using the journal to learn about the mysteries of the town. It is so useful to learn about monsters and secrets in a way that feels explorative while still being an exposition dump. Very good writing there, and very good at hiding that exposition. It is also the catalyst of so many of the show's stories, whether it's Little Gideon scheming for the Journal 3, or Dipper summoning zombies to prove its validity to Dare, and then going to Stan's mystery, it does a lot for the show. And the fact that the mystery of the book continues into the real world, where we can learn more about the show by purchasing the physical Journal 3, I think it's one of the coolest MacGuffins in animation. Another very big mystery is Stan's scheme. In the first episode, we see Grunkle Stan sneak off to somewhere behind the vending machine. This is left almost untouched until the season 1 finale where we learn Stan had the first journal and has gotten the last two, which is a big revelation. In that scene, we also learn about the basement, which gives us even more questions. Season 2 develops the basement mystery even more, and we get closer to the completion of the one portal. One of my favorite details is that in the Gravity Falls intro, we see Dipper and Mabel levitate as well as everything in the rooms, which for season one we just think is, oh, it's the town being weird, cool intro. But after seeing the basement episode, it takes a whole new context. Just all of not what he seems adds so much to the Stan mystery and is the perfect conclusion to the story. It is such an amazing episode of television that it makes you doubt that everything we've seen in the first season and a half of the show was it re real? Is Stan actually good? Is he not? It's written so well. Next mystery was never really an actual mystery for those who binged the show. But when the show aired, there was a four-month gap between Not What He Seems and A Tale of Two Stands. So in between these episodes, a new, though short-lasting mystery emerges. Who was the second Stan? Of course, we learned in the episode about Stanford, which introduces even more mysteries about Bill Cipher, but there was one piece of setup in the show which makes the Stan mystery really stand on its own two feet for how small and lived it was. In the first episode with Blendon Blandon, at the end of the episode where he needs to fix all of Dipper and Mabel's shenanigans, we see him in a bunch of previous Gravity Falls episodes, which is great planning because you can go back to plot those episodes. He's there, but even better planning is that we saw Stanford just for a second. When talking about Stanford, it is also very important to bring up the mystery of the journal author. It was a slow burn, but something where we could get a bunch of cool theories, be both inside and outside the show, and then those theories have evidence in the show, and then evidence against them, kind of debunking them. Probably the most important episode is Enter the Bunker. In this episode, we go into the survival bunker of the author and learn a bunch of his dark secrets and even find the laptop, which ties into Bill and McGucket and the mystery of the blind eye. But the biggest takeaway being the author isn't anywhere around Gravity Falls because this bunker has been alone for a while, the monster been alone for a while. But I mentioned Bill and his mystery is quite interesting as well. We see the cipher glyph since the first time we watched the intro, but he isn't ever brought into the story until Dreamscapers threw Gideon. Gideon had had the second journal at this point, and used it for a bunch of creepy magic, but with the journal, he learned how to summon Bill Cipher. Even though it seems he's just another monster of the week, just seeing and hearing him makes him grab your attention, and that you know he's going to be something greater, even if you're not sure what yet. This episode set up Bill... This episode sets up Bill's relationship with Stan Pines, although it is Stanford who he knows and not Stan Lee. Bill comes back a few more times, but until the last Mabel corn, nothing really comes together in that episode. Brings it all together. 
Stanford and Bill were partners. Stan needing Bill for his research, and Bill was using Stan to escape the invention. Both of them were using each other, and Stan needed to stop Bill. Stanford asked for Uncle Stan's help, and Uncle Stan accidentally sends Bill sends Stanford to Bill's dimension. The thing I love so much about Bill is that he is the embodiment of chaos, yet everything he does feels so well planned by the writers. What well, seems like throwaway lines come back, and I love that so much. For example, in Saw Opera, we learn Bill can possess people. That comes back in The Last Mabel Corn, where we learn that he possessed Stanford. And finally, in Dipple and Mabel vs. the Future, when Bill possesses Blandon. We also have a lot of great one-episode mysteries, which are just so well-written, and I forget that it all happens in one episode, one thing like that. great example is The Eight and a Half President, where Dipper and Mabel fall down this conspiracy rabbit hole until they get in trouble with the government, for learning about a cover-up that the government did. Another great example is the Northwest Manor Mystery, which is just such an amazing episode. It has so many great twists and turns, and although starting off formatted almost like a Scooby-Doo episode, by the end, when the mystery is solved halfway through, we get a big twist in the story where the ghost actually wins. We even get resolution to a past mystery where the shapeshifter from Into the Bunker said Dipper's fate would be some statue position, and sure enough, in this episode, he becomes a statue. The reason Gravity Falls can have all these cool mysteries is just the forethought inside the writing. These mysteries wouldn't work without the crazy amount of planning that went into the show. For that same reason, when I get sad, when it seems Disney is trying to revert back to their episodic shows, because while I enjoy them, watching a new episode and getting a crazy revelation like in the Twist of Two Stands, it's just so great, and that's why I love the 2010s with all these sto stories like Owl House, Amphibia, even Star vs. the Force of Evil. For that reason, another Disney Channel show, which had had the promise of an overarching story in Hades on it, has been really disappointing me recently, as well as a bunch of other reasons. To hear more about that, click on this video. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been my first Gravity Falls video on the channel, so I really hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you want more. Anyways, though, thank you all for watching. I have been Fictional Fanatics. I will see you in that Hades on it video. But until then, bye!